Hey everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV where the game is conspiring to make a liar of me. The original intent for today was to do side quests up in Costa del Sol, but well, as you can tell, we're doing a seasonal event today instead. I was going to do side quests in Costa del Sol, but turns out most of them, more than I thought, had a specific main story requirement that we're not quite to yet, so... We will get there when we get there. For now, today we are doing a seasonal event. Hatching Tide! Hatching Tide 2023. Oh my god, I just realized it's 2023. That's... When we hit halfway through the year, I'll be used to that. But yes, Hatching Tide is the annual Easter event. So before we get started, hello there, egg advocate, dreamer. Terribly sorry, but I'm afraid we're not yet open for business. Please check back again later. Well, I was hoping you would tell me about the event. Someone around here has to know something about the event. Maybe you, courteous collector. Good day to you, friend. Might you be interested in learning about the Hatching Tide festivities? I would indeed. A fledgling festival, Hatching Tide was born of a prophetic dream visited upon a Gridanian maiden named Jili Aliapo. In her dream, the twelve Archons of old appeared, those heroes who saved the realm from the destruction of the sixth Umbral Calamity. Descending from the heavens atop beautifully decorated eggs, they said to Jilly, Arise, young dreamer, and make ready the vessels of our return. And so she did, painstakingly painting and gilding eggs to match those from her vision. Word of the prophecy spread, and Jilly attracted helpers to assist in her toils. After the calamity, the festival grew further, as townsfolks and adventurers flocked to celebrate the Archons of Yore, who many believed had uh, some hand in delivering the realm once again. Well, that is an interesting history indeed! And the founder of the event, Jilly Aliapo, is right up here. Hello there, Jilly! You feel eyes upon you, and they're not just Jilly Aliapos. Ah, so, if you know Final Fantasy, you probably recognize the horrifying creatures that have been standing around in this event. Tonberries. We'll get into Tonberries. Eventually. Greetings, friend, and a happy hatching tide to you. Allow me, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jilly Aliapo, and I facilitate the annual Hatching Tide festivities. You are an adventurer, are you not? Might I ask for your name? My name is Satora. Satora, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. In case you are unaware, a Hatching Tide festivities were conceived a number of years ago after I was first visited by the Twelve Archons in a stirring and prophetic dream. And I confess, I've been dreaming ever since. Oh, I am most eager to share my latest dream with you. It was highly peculiar, to say the least. You see, I beheld visions of that chilling creature of legend, of legend the Tonberry. You know what, since this event is about the Tonberry, I should probably go over them. They're able to kill you in one hit. That's about it. They're assassins. They're horrifying assassins who are absolutely a nightmare to deal with. If past experience has taught me anything, it is that painstakingly recreating my dreams is sure to bring about good fortune. However, as Tonberries are not but figments of old fables, I began to doubt whether I could do justice to their ghastly appearance. But that all changed when this gentleman generously offered his assistance. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. My name is Hamlin, and I am what you might call a supreme connoisseur and passionate aficionado of all things Tonberry. I regret that voice immediately. As you may or may not be aware, Tonberries have heads as round and adorable as any egg, and which is why I believe they are the perfect addition to the Hatching Tide festivities. So I donned the superior mantle of the Tonberry and presented myself to Miss Jilly here. <laughs> I regret that so much, I'm so sorry. That is literally the stereotype that is used that was used to mock me when I was younger. So I don't know how I feel about doing that, but also. That's clearly what they were going for. What luck, wouldn't you agree? Hanlon was kind enough to furnish our other volunteers with Tonberry guises, and we're all hard at work at preparing for the upcoming fun. A lot of eggy, stabby fun it shall be. Oh, she's so excited about the stabbing. Exactly! That's the spirit of Hatching Tide. Perhaps without the stabby part. Considering my dream, I think that these festivities present a unique opportunity to share the Tonberry's charm with the world. There is but one problem. A group of sylphs has been making mischief throughout town. 
playing pranks, sabotaging the decorations. Well, that's no good. Luckily, it seems a mere glance of the Tonberry farm is enough to send those leafy brigands fleeing in terror. Is, is it not remarkable how such an adorable visage can strike such fear into the hearts of some? Does not the contradiction of the Tonberry's nature invigorate your very soul? Oh my god, I regret this. I hate this. Our other volunteers are using their Tonberry guys to shoo away the Sills as best they can, but we still find ourselves short-handed. Would you be willing to assist us, Satora? Just until the mischief is mitigated. Sure, I can do that. My sincerest thanks. Hamlet has prepared a plethora of guises for us, so I'm sure he'll have one that fits you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do Hamlin's voice anymore. You get the idea. I don't I don't want to torture myself or anyone else any longer than I have to, so. Hamlin, can I have a disguise? Now then, let us commence with this most sacred of ceremonies. Come closer. <laughs> You must continue wearing the guise to progress. Speak with Hamlin to restore or prolong the garment change. It will last for... looks like 30 minutes. Alright, let's go find us some sylphs to scare away. I know they love pranks, but could they please chill just for today? Well, if these ones can't have fun with tusk ones, walking ones won't have any fun either. This one will make sure of it. But how about some eggy, eggy, stabby fun? Yeah, monstrous one! This is why these ones need tusked ones! What's this about? Not being allowed to play with tusked ones? That would be boars, I assume, but what's going on with that? Well, hello there, down below. But if these ones are naughty, Elder One will become Scolding One. Yeah, Frixio sure will become a Scolding One. No one will know it's these ones. Besides, it isn't that naughty. Hehe. <laughs> Don't be naughty. Have some eggy, eggy, stabby fun. Yep, yeah, please. This one didn't mean any harm. E Sticky One, get it away. Yeah, you all better run. Okay then, and the last one we need to hunt down is a hunt, not hunt. I guess we're Tonberry, so hunt. Hide well, warty one, then spring out and make the walking one screech and jump. Hee <laughs> hee, this one can't wait. Well, let's, uh, did you just call me a warty one? Let's have some eggy eggy stabby fun, because you seem to really enjoy fun. Scary one, scary one is here! Flee, flee! Well, I'd call that a success! Good news, Hamlin, we got rid of all of these sylphs who are causing trouble. Also, I love that it's clearly a costume when you run. Just look at that tail flop around like it's made of... Not body. Not body. We'll, we'll go with that. It's made of cloth. I trust you return from a job well done. I'm sure Miss Chili will like to hear the particulars. You may relay your report after I relieve you of that outfit. <laughs> awful, 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 awful. I'm glad to hear those sylphs fluttered back home. Thank you for all of your help, Satora. Yes, you perform most admirably, not only in deed, but in dress. Upon beholding a Tonberry performing such selfless acts of valor, the citizens of Gridania are sure to have warmed to our adorable paragons of pointy justice. All according to... plan. Our other volunteers are currently making the rounds and checking the rest of the decorations for any residual surprises, but I dare say we should be able to officially begin the celebration soon. All that's left is to wait for our Archon Eggs to arrive from Ulda. I hope you enjoy the festivities. Something tells me that this shall be a hatching tide to remember. We have a problem. Minota, whatever is the matter? It's the eggs, Jilly. The Archon eggs. The sylph swarmed the shipment as it entered the central shroud and zapped the delivery mammoth into a frenzy. The caravan has been brought to a complete standstill. 
Well, that's not good. If only you had seen it. The chaos, the carnage, the eggs! Our beautiful Archon eggs scattered across the ground, sylphs pilfering them like spriggans, and that smoking mammoth rampaging like an old goat possessed. Twas sheer mayhem, Jilly! The sylphs presented no demands, offered no reason behind their rampant pillaging. But they did keep squeaking about tough ones and no ferret. Why should walking ones have all the fun? What do you suppose they meant? Ah, I heard the Sylphs once had held an annual spring festival, but there was an incident involving one of their fighting boars. I believe that was the end of such festivities. I understand how it must pain them to see us cheerfully prepare for hatching tide, but those ill-gotten eggs won't ease their suffering. We must find a way to recover them. Hee, if I may be so bold, I believe I have the perfect solution to your conundrum. Satora's assistance will be crucial, however. You will lend us your aid, yes? Yep, you know I will. Alright then, Hamlin, what is your plan? Hamlin is quivering in his excitement. Uh, please don't. You wish to lend your strength to my brilliant plan, do you? Very well, our divine mission is as follows. We must adorn ourselves in the guise of the Tonberry and scare the sylphs away from the fallen eggs. Ahem, that may seem like a rather familiar tactic, but terror cuts as sharply as a knife in the right hands. As does the power of the Tonberry. We shall remind those sylphs of what adorable horror leaks in the, lurks in the shadow. It is time to make the Tonberry's naturally winsome and captivating visage and transform it into a mask of pure evil. Observe! Quite a scary sight indeed. I suppose that makes sense, but what of the delivery mammoth? In its panic state, it may easily mistake us for not but common egg thieves, or perhaps not so common considering the guises. That's where Satora's participation is crucial. Even an overexcited automaton is no match for an adventure versed in the arts of warfare. Of course, I shan't be so cruel as to send you into battle as defenseless as the swaddled ton, babe. You may rely upon me to perform the necessary enhancements upon your guys. That shall grant any savvy sweetheart the ability to withstand even the harshest of electrified zaps. In theory, anyway. In the midst of adversity lies opportunity, as they say. Or rather, in the midst of the scattered Archon eggs that stands the noble Tonberry, all that all might witness its triumphant glory. Very well, let us proceed with Hamlin's plan and see that our eggs are recovered safely. Hmm, <laughs> excellent. I shall commence the enhancement of this guise at once and have it ready for deployment in two flicks of a Tonberry's blade. Satora, let us meet where the bells of destiny toll. Two arms! Alright, then out we go to Central Shroud in order to get those eggs back. I will go ahead and meet you there because that's going to be right by the path to South Shroud. Alright, heading south from Bent Branch here in the Central Shroud. We will soon come across where the fates will be taking place. Looks like it is not currently active, but that's fine. That'll give us time to get there and be ready. The fates should spawn with a fairly frequent regularity, so we shouldn't have to wait too long. But... Yeah, there's a few people who have already been waiting for a bit, so... Ah! And perfect timing! It's starting! Hello there, sylphs. Now, as soon as this fate starts... We should be able to level sync, switch into costume... And begin the fate. Oh dear! Okay, so the way this fate's going to work... We have sylphs! Sylphs everywhere, trying to do AoE attacks in order to, uh, make our life hell. If they hit us with their AoEs, we will be stunned for a little bit. But we can use our Frighten emote, which we have been granted for this special fate, in order to scare them away. If we can scare away some Sylphs, I believe every Sylph we scare will give us one egg each. We scared like five or six at once there, so we should get a whole bunch of eggs probably get out of that and go grab these eggs. 
The more eggs we get, the better. Once someone starts turning their eggs in, the fate will probably wrap up pretty quickly. Once we've hit whatever the uh, per fate goal is for number of eggs, we'll have about a minute to turn in whatever we have. The more eggs we collect, the more reward we get, and we want a certain amount of the reward, so we might need to do the fate a couple of times? I suspect no more than maybe twice. But if I have to do it twice, I will do the second run off screen. No need to make you watch the same thing over and over again. Okay, get out of that. Grab those eggs. But I believe our goal is to get 14 of whatever the reward is. I think that's going to take something like... 40 eggs located? Something like that. I don't know the exact conversion from egg to the reward. Also, you may have noticed the big thing we need to watch out for is the mammoth will apparently, on occasion, decide to cause problems. Okay, got a few more eggs, and let's not play too risky. Let's go turn in our eggs so we actually get a reward. Oh, we only got 16. Phenomenal, Tonberry. Thanks you, we now metaphorically sit upon a proverbial treasure trove of quite literal Archon eggs. Okay, let's go ahead and see what else we can get before time up. We only have about... Yeah, we don't have too much time left, so let's go hand these over. Got another three from the sylphs we scared. If I can get one more, that might be good. That might hit me. I don't know enough about how it decides. The reward. But I want to say it goes in tears. Okay, for 20 eggs, we got 10 eggs. I think, I think it's for every 10 eggs we hand over, we get 5 eggs in payment. I think that's how it goes. But now that we've finished that, we can go ahead and report back to Jilly Aliapo and finish off the quest. Alright, Jilly, I made it back and I did stick around for a little while to do another round of the fate so I could get up to 20 of the special Midnight Archon eggs. And here comes our hero now! Hamlin has just been regaling us with the tale of your valor, Satora. We can't thank you enough for recovering those Archon eggs. Truly, from the bottom of our hearts and purses, thank you. My single regret is that no rapturous bystanders were present in those solitary woods to witness such valorous displays. Alas, the Tonberry's majesty will once again pass unacknowledged. Yet, such is often the way with true goodness. The hero that works in secrecy for the betterment of all, my friends, their name is Tonberry. Profound, I'm sure, I must say, Hamlin. Your unflagging devotion to all things Tonberry is both remarkable and admirable. If anything, it's a little bit on the concerning side. Um, pardon me. We were in those solitary woods, and we saw what you did for us, or what the Tonberries did for us. I was heartbroken when the sylph snatched away the Archon Egg that my friend had given me. But thanks to you, it was recovered safely. You Tonberries have my eternal thanks. I only wish you didn't have to scare the sylphs so badly. The poor things, is there no other way to deter their mischief? Ah, my Tonberry senses are tingling. Indeed. Consider this. If we decorate our eggs with a Tonberry theme, the Sylphs wouldn't dare snatch or sabotage them. A dark green coat on a large egg with two golden circles for eyes? Not bad at all. Perhaps even cute. Jilly, perhaps this is what your dream foretold. Not just Tonberry guises, but Tonberry eggs and decorations as well. In which case, we should send word to our Uldon goldsmiths that we'd like another batch of Archon eggs and some striking shades of Tonberry.
Of course, all of our eggs are packaged during transit, meaning the Sills will likely continue their mischief outside the city. I'm tempted to send a Tonberry guard with the caravan, but the road from Uldah is far too long to attempt in such a guise. We shall continue to consider possible alternatives, but in the meantime, should you happen to come across another waylaid shipment, I hope I can count on your assistance. Er, as a Tonberry, of course. Well, seeing as our Archon eggs have finally arrived, I dare say it is time to officially get cracking. Let the hatching tide festivities begin. Indeed! And as a reward, we get that Frighten emote we were using. You have unlocked the Egg Hunter Riggy minigame! To play minigames, open the toy chest found in any in room. Nice! I may have to check that out at some point, but probably not for a good while. I'd like to unlock a good chunk of minigames before we start really looking at those. Now then, we've got a few things to do before we are wrapped up today, because we're not done yet just because the quest is over. First off, we've got a shop here now. For every two special Midnight Archon eggs, we can get part of a Tonberry costume, which a few people have actually been wearing in a few episodes recently. So we can go ahead and buy the full costume. I'll have to stick that into my glamour, please, into my glamour dresser since these are seasonal costumes. Next up, we can also get the orchestrian role for Papaya Demastered, which is the song that's been playing in the background whenever we are over by Miketo's Amphitheater or any of the main event squares in any of the three main city states. We'll get that orchestrian roll. We might as well get a stack of magic prisms for hatching tide. And you know what? I will get the housing advertisement. The housing decoration. Sure, why not? And then we can spend the rest on the magic prisms. Alright, we now have everything that can be gotten from this event. Let's learn the emote. Learn the orchestrian roll. And let's check out that magic prism. Eggs! Eggs everywhere. Alright, we are not quite done yet. We have people to talk to in celebration of the event. First off, over here, Mooning Tonberry and Too Beautiful Tonberry. I'm surprised these two are showing up because we have not done the side quest chain involving them, but oh well. I came here for a peek at the latest fashion trends, but then out of nowhere, a complete stranger approached me and invited me to tea. Oh, of course, I only have eyes for one man and one man alone, but I do appreciate a hot beverage. Oh, Yellow Moonberry, we're really in it now. This is Yellow Moon. She is a... I want to say she's Rogodine? She's either Rogodine or Elizabeth. I forget, it has been a while since I've actually done her quest. Uh, but you can find her in the Weaver's Guild, just kind of chilling as a customer. And then this one is also involved in the quest that brings her up. Well, if it isn't Satora, come to partake in the sights, have you? I must say, this Tonberry suit may be the most daring fashion statement I've seen all season. I've been told that Hamlin had handcrafted each and every one. His ability to convey passion through his pieces is quite remarkable. I dare say he possesses the sort of creative instinct that most artisans would trade their left hand for. Oh, uh, was I mistaken? Is this actually, uh, the guildmaster for the Weaver's Guild? Hmm, I thought you were someone else entirely, but no. It's hard to tell when they are underneath their Tonberry costumes in my defense. Okay, next up over here, we have Solemn Berry Seer, Sprightly Berry Seer, and Swaying Palm Berry. Uh, this was a mistake, Koopo. There's no room in here. Gah! Pookney Pock, are you alright, Koopo? Pookney Pock? Pookney Pock, speak to me! Pookney Pock! Snake? Snake! Uh, so yeah, you may recognize those names, but I don't believe we've actually spoken to those particular moogles that are hiding inside the suit. Hatching Tide festivities have certainly evolved into a parade of peculiar attire. Even our sister once donned a rabbit suit for the occasion. Although I must say that this year's guises are by far the most peculiar I've yet seen. Tonberries! Who would have imagined? And the Solemn Berry Seer. When the Elder Seeds here bade us partake in these festivities, never could I have imagined it would necessitate the assuming the guise of a Tonberry. 
However, as Guardian of the Twelves, what it is my duty to support our people's endeavors, no matter how bizarre. So yeah, these are all the people involved in the White Mage questline. Uh, f oh my god, their names are not coming to me. But Sprightly is the one who actually teaches us, Solemn is the shitty brother who is very salty about everything, and the Swaying Palmberry is the two Moogles who hang out with Sprightly. I forget their names, I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm so bad with names. Next up, we have a suspect Tonberry. Yeah, the walking one from before! This one wishes to apologize on behalf of other ones. Those ones didn't mean any- no, those ones did mean harm, but only because those ones were jealous ones. This one isn't here for mischief making or egg breaking. Promise, this one only wants to enjoy the festival with walking ones, so please don't tattle. Don't worry, just don't cause problems and I won't tattle. And I believe that is basically everyone. There are more Tonberries who can show up. Specifically, I believe if you complete the level, I want to say 80, so not happening, uh, level 80 Scholar Quest, there will be another pair of Tonberries who show up right around here. But, well, that's not happening. Um, one of them is Alkazulka. Uh, I guess it's worth pointing out, since we do know Alkazulka. Elkazulka and someone we meet in the Scholar quest line will show up here after. I want to say the Scholar 80 quest. But, yeah. So with that, we have completed our seasonal event. Hatching Tide is complete. So, next time on Final Fantasy XIV, we are heading back. Back to Costa del Sol to continue trying to prove to Wiscat that we are more than capable of taking on Titan. I'll see everyone next time for that.